Hello, Jamie J with Bottleneck Virtual Assistance and BottleneckMedical.com, uh, helping out physicians and podiatrists in particular with their virtual medical needs, either virtual medical scribes or a general medical virtual assistant, also a new patient coordinator, a cool new thing that a friend of ours, Cindy Peza, came up with. So excited to help you stop the bottleneck in your business. So we were going to go ahead and get started here in about 38 seconds. So we'll see you soon. Well, hello there. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in today on Live with Bottleneck. My name is Jamie J. For those of you that don't know me, hopefully you do. But if you don't, I'm the CEO and founder of Bottleneck Virtual Assistance. And I'm also the co-founder with our special guest today, Dr. David Lorino. And we're going to be talking about um, his new business, his new private practice that he's starting up out in Arizona, as well as what bottleneck medical virtual assistants can help you out with uh, if you're a physician or podiatrist. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, we've got an expert here in Dr. David Lorino. So feel free to reach out ask questions, and uh, we'll be happy and look forward to those questions. But uh, first of all, um, how medical distant assistance can help you in your practice. That's what we're going to be talking about today with a co-founder of Modern Foot and Ankle Centers and co-founder of BottleneckMedical.com, Dr. David Lorino. Now, Dr. Lorino, he's a good friend of mine and co-founder and managing partner of Bottleneck Medical Virtual Services, founder and CEO of the Podiatry Success Institute and host of the Podiatry Success Institute Business Podcast. He's busy. <laughs> he also serves on the board of directors for the Institute of Podiatric Excellence and Development and manages a multi-doctor, multi-location medical practice. And he has learned through nearly 20 years of professional experience that growth is largely dependent on strategic delegation. Now he works with physicians looking to grow their practices and improve efficiency and ultimately work smarter, not harder. He credits much of his success, and there's a lot of it, to the roadblocks he has faced as he viewed each as an opportunity for improvement. And he is dedicated to building a successful practice and living an epic life. <laughs> and I am so stoked to bring on my good friend and partner, uh, Dr. David Lorena. How are you, sir? Doing great, Jamie. How are you doing today? Oh my gosh, I I'm pumped, man! I am I'm excited that I get to finally talk with you. <laughs> You've been busy. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little busy on both of our ends for sure. Yeah, exactly. What what have you been up to? Nothing, just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, enjoying the 115 degree weather there in in uh, Tempe and. <laughs> yeah. the typical COVID-19 thing, you know, just quarantined and hanging out, you know, doing nothing. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, been, it's been really busy uh, out here in Arizona. We've been uh, working our butts off to get the new practice up and really moving forward. Um, I transitioned out of a practice uh, to this new practice that we're building. Uh, that I was in a previous practice for about 15 years, 16 years or so. And and uh, we had a little difference of opinions amongst the partners. And so we kind of broke off, did our own thing. And we're really excited about this new venture that uh, we're starting up here. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's been fun. It's been interesting, a lot of hard work, but uh, overall it's been uh, gratifying to say the least. Oh, that's fantastic. And, and so, so you're starting a new practice. So you've really taken advantage of the downtime uh, during COVID. Um, what, what is, what has been the most, I guess I want to say what's been the most challenging thing, but what's been scariest about making this transition? You know, I think the fear of the unknown is probably the biggest thing, Jamie. I mean, I think that happens for all of us when we're entering something new, starting something new is just what's going to happen. What could be, what are the pitfalls that could develop here? And so I think that's the biggest thing is just the fear of the unknown. Now it's not quite the fear of the unknown. Cause I did this 20 years ago when I started my first venture into podiatry and medical practice 
uh, ownership. So it it took me back though, I can tell you about 20 years because when you're starting and when you do it for 20 years, it's just things are very routine day in and day mm-hmm. out. Um, and then when you kind of pump the brakes a little bit and say, oh my gosh, I got to go back and start to learn how to hire people again, fire people again, build out my operations manual, um, you know, just building the infrastructure for your business, I think, uh, and trying to figure all of those little bits and pieces out uh, are probably the scariest parts. And I think that's for any new practitioner coming out, uh, even though I got 20 years under my belt, I did have to re-educate myself on some of these things. And, and the good thing is that I've got great people around me who support me uh, through this venture and uh, practice management con- consultants. Uh, I know I've even leaned on you for a couple of things, especially when it comes to website development and uh, SEO stuff. So, you know, it, it, it's good to have good people around you because they help uh, push you and drive you forward. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, it's all about empowering the team Um, making everybody feel uh, like their role is super important. And I think that goes for any business. Um, But uh, starting up a new business, starting up a new practice, there's a lot of things you got to look out for. One of the things that uh, brought you and I together was um, you had a couple challenges you were faced uh, with. uh, Well, you had several, but operationally speaking, a couple challenges that you were facing. Um, Let me see. I, I think it's spelled pediatrist. Uh, uh, no, Todd, it's, it's actually Poe. <laughs> <laughs> Poe diatrist. Uh, pediatric, perhaps, is maybe, maybe uh, what you're thinking. But uh, Dr. Lorino is a, a specialist in foot and ankle. Uh, that's where his specialty is. And maybe you can alleviate or, or, or elaborate a little bit more on that, Dr. Lorino. Yeah. So, you know, for those who don't know, a podiatrist is an individual who specializes in uh, the medical component as well as the surgical component of lower extremities, primarily the foot and ankle. So that's kind of our bread and butter and our wheelhouse is what we focus on. But, you know, there are interrelated components. I mean, there's knee, hip, back problems that people develop. Uh, and it, a lot of it can stem from the foundation, which technically is their foot. So, you know, we're focusing on foot and ankle, but we help people uh, basically from foot to toe, uh, head to toe. Uh, I mean, you name it, we are trying to help people uh, as best we can across the medical spectrum. Yeah, that's fantastic. Todd Wester is is a great guy. Actually used to work in the BBO industry, uh, the business process outsourcing. And I was recently on his podcast. So it's nice to see him jump on board from LinkedIn there. Um, And if you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, uh, uh, it doesn't matter. If you have any questions, let us know. We'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Anything having to do with uh, systems, processes, spe- specifically in the medical or podiatry industry, would be happy to answer any of those questions. But some of the things that we were, uh, oh, <laughs> Todd says, uh, you're right. I'm just not that smart. Oh, believe me, Todd, I am not that smart either. If it wasn't for Dr. Lorino, I would have never known how to spell <laughs> anything. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a couple of the challenges that you have, one of them you called the bane of your existence. And I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I know you've heard me reference this many times, Jamie, and, and, and I'm sure that this is a very common theme amongst not just podiatrists, but everybody who works in any medical specialty across the United States and probably the globe for that matter. But it's charting, it's progress notes, it's documentation, which are critical components to what we do on a day-to-day basis, but it's very time consuming and it eats into your day and your patient care. And, you know, we went to medical school to become physicians. We're, we want to diagnose and treat people. We didn't go to be, you know, glorified court reporters um, sitting there hammering away on a keyboard. Uh, And that's kind of what we've been forced to do as we enter, you know, practice now that the young kids and, you know, 20 year veteran like myself, um, you know, it's just, it's gotten very laborious and it, uh, I've, I've read statistics that have shown that it can be anywhere from 25 to 40% of your day is spent charting. And I mean, that is, it's ridiculous to have to even think that we're spending that much time doing administrative work which could easily be done 
by somebody else in our clinic. I mean, you have to leverage the, the highest value of our education and our time, and that's not doing administrative work. It's actually seeing and treating patients. You know, and, and I give it up because, I mean, there's so much oversight. There's so many things, and I understand. I mean, we're in such a litigious environment and, and uh, with technology and data, you know, data being even more valuable than the almighty dollar or money. Mm -hmm. It's, I can understand why there's, you know, rules and, and things in place for this, but how many hours of business school did you take while you became an actual doctor? <laughs> Great question. So you, you don't get any really in medical school. So, you know, you're, you're going through rotations and um, you're, you're talking to your professors and, you know, these guys who you think have it all figured out and they tell you, oh, you know, just become a great physician, understand the anatomy, understand how the body works, you understand pharmacology, et cetera. And it'll all work out on its own. And the reality of it is that's false because you can be an excellent clinician and a terrible businessman. Hands, and, and you see it all day, every day, because people are buried in paperwork. They're buried in HR components. They just don't know truly how to run the practice. And like I said, they're probably a top clinician, but they're just not astute enough to have all the business acumen in order to keep things uh, afloat. Sometimes, you know, maybe they're seeing 25 patients a day and they're bringing in a ton of money, but they can't figure out why the bank account's empty. Well, yeah. you know, they're, they're just spinning their wheels in so many different directions, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so to answer that, it, nobody ever gets any business classes um, or education while they're in medical school. It's just, you, you're kind of left on your own to try and figure it all out. And uh, it's a very unfortunate thing. And I think a disservice to physicians uh, across the globe because they just assume we're going to have all the, the skills and the tools and the knowledge when we get out to go open a practice. And it's just not the case. Yeah. There's a book out there by Michael Gerber called E-Myth Revisited. And, and it's all about the story of an entrepreneur. In this case, I can say physician or podiatrist or, or doctor um, that started something because they had such an amazing passion for that. And I'm being very general because of, of, of your background. And we're talking about podiatry here today. And they start this business and then they find, you know, I love doing this thing. I love helping people. I love seeing the smiles on people's face after we help them, whatever that may be, whatever uh, vertical it is. And then all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, we got to do counting. Oh, my gosh, I got to, you know, go wait for a couple months to get approved for, you know, insurance or, oh, gosh, now I have to make sure that all the notes are, are done correctly so that we don't get a uh, HIPAA violation. Oh, my gosh, we got to hit HIPAA compliant. Oh, my oh gosh, we got to train all these people. Oh, and then they leave. And now I got to do, you know, there's it just seems like one thing after a number, another that takes you away from doing what it is you're most passionate about. Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, and I think that goes for uh, pretty much any business. And, and, you know, to reference Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth, it's one of my favorite books. And it's a pretty simplistic book, but it talks a lot about systemization and how important it is in every single business that's starting up. Because if the systems are broken, then the business is broken, uh, unfortunately. And you know, I, I think, you know, as a word of advice, I think that's one place where people should start is figure out the systems that are critical for your business or industry, uh, really hone in on those, dial them in, get them nice and tight, and then you can move that particular business forward at a much faster speed than you could ever imagine. Right. Um, and this question by Todd, this this actually is a nice segue to maybe touch kind of move into a little bit about what bottleneck medical uh, virtual services is all about. And he says, how do you outsource medical service processes and stay HIPAA compliant? I want to maybe go back from that. Can you tell us a little bit about what HIPAA compliancy is? Yeah. So, so HIPAA is a standard that they put in place, the health health information port. I can never get it right. Porta <laughs> portability portability protection uh, act. And so, and, and so it's one of those things that's trying to protect patient data, which is critical, right? Mm -hmm. As you alluded to earlier, data is probably more powerful and important 
than dollars right now. And, and patients are always concerned about where is my data being stored, who is it being shared with, et cetera. So um, we take it very seriously uh, in, in our clinic, and I think clinics across uh, any particular industry should be doing this. And uh, we do that primarily here in our clinic, but also through our dedicated distant assistants. Jamie's been very instrumental in helping to try and coordinate uh, HIPAA protection for every single VA or DDA that we work with. So it's really an important piece. And we, uh, like I said, take it very seriously. So nobody gets into our systems that isn't uh, HIPAA certified, has HIPAA protection. We take the software very seriously because there can be breaches through software, et cetera. So HIPAA software has got to be also uh, up to date and current and HIPAA protected. So yeah, we, we work very hard uh, at Bottleneck to make sure that we're HIPAA protected, not only for the clinicians, but also through the DDAs that we're working with as well. hundred uh, percent. And uh, Todd says, how safe is it for doctors to outsource this type of service offshore? Um, and you know, there's, I'm sure Dr. Lino, you can, you can chime in on this, but one of the things that I've found is there's special HIPAA compliance certifications that are remote based, especially with the onset of what's happening with COVID. Many people had to work remotely. So there's still stuff that has to happen. People still have to go in for surgeries. People still had to do stuff. And, and a lot of times this is taken off site and remote. And so this, the special EHR softwares, EHR electronic health records. Some people, I, I believe, refer to the EMR, electronic medical records software. Um, you give access to to um, to certain locations, um, and from if they outsource this offshore, there's virtual private networks that people have to gain access through. There's bring your own device. Uh, um, standards that we have to do where if you go you have to be hardwired in for security reasons there's certain things that you have to have installed on the local computer you can't be sharing that computer with anybody you have to have a backup plan in place on what happens if um, so there's there's actually four different areas that we are having to go get recertified for and we're going through it right now it's a 12 to 16 week pro process so that we can get all the latest updates and and do things like that so it's it's definitely not a fun place to be but it's, it's very important because ultimately the the goal is to protect the the, the practice and, and minimize their liability that being said there's a human being involved in all this. So it's pretty much the same thing as someone coming into the office as it is remote because there's certain check-in policies that are in place. There's certain, there's certain um, critical, or there's certain criteria that needs to be met in order for somebody to be um, chosen to do this specific type of, 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 of job. Yeah, and, and to add to that for uh, Todd, I would say, you know, I think it's a very safe, uh, situation to off outsource and offshore this um, because within our businesses it's not that uncommon to find uh, rogue employees who can create tremendous amounts of damage internally within your practice so I think the safeguards need to be on both sides internally as well as externally um, so I, I think that that's a, a critical piece because I think we've all probably had a, a rogue employee who's you know done something that was not by our company standards, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and to be honest with you, you know, I've, I've had uh, DDAs in my clinic now for going on 19, 20 months, and uh, we've never had any issues uh, with any of them, and, you know, knock on wood. So uh, we've got a pretty good track record there, but I've certainly had a lot more issues internally than I have externally. Yeah, I think with one of the things too is um, our organization has its own compliancy manager, a HIPAA compliancy manager specifically to manage HIPAA compliancy regulations. So they go through special training just for that, a single person at our organization. While each private practice is, is liable for their own, own HIPAA um, compliancy violations, we are doing our best to make sure that we can do everything we can in our power to ease that workload for the physician, for the podiatrist, and also be mindful so that they're at ease understanding and knowing that, hey, we've gone through this certification. We understand the HIPAA compliancy regulations and rules for a remote-based operation, remote-based being anywhere in the world. Yep. So, um, 
we talked about the vein of your existence was a virtual medical scribe and um, how those show notes were kind of taking you for a while. Was, I mean, I, we went to a conference in Florida and I was talking about virtual medical assistance and people in the audience, the doctors, were updating their notes while they were at the conference. Like it's a constant thing. They go on vacation to update their notes almost. And it, it just seems crazy and overwhelming. So can you give us kind of a, a, a day in the life of what a virtual medical scribe does for you for uh, your practice? Yeah. So, you know, we, we've kind of broken it down into two different uh, individuals for a DDA. And that would be somebody who does general medical uh, virtual assistants as well as a virtual medical scribe. So uh, a general medical virtual assistant would do something along the lines of administrative work, you know, answer phone calls, do callbacks, uh, paperwork, uh, updating systems and programs uh, internally for you. And then a virtual medical scribe would be somebody who, you know, I call it like the parrot on my shoulder who just kind of looks over my shoulder, listens in, and then completes all the work for me. So I guess in while you're actually in the exam room, right? Correct. Yeah. So the way that works is, you know, you would take in a laptop, a tablet. I mean, I've even gone so far as using my cell phone um, when I've had a bad internet connection. So uh, that piece of technology you take in there with you is basically your connection with your virtual medical scribe who's listening in the background. And this can be on video and audio. And they're just taking in all of the information, inputting it into the electronic health record alive while you're uh, dealing with the patient. And then hopefully by the time you're done seeing, diagnosing and treating that patient, you're able to walk out of that room and hopefully your chart note is done. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, a little bit of training to get your uh, virtual scribe up to speed. However, once it's done, you really can hopefully walk out of your, your uh, office you know, by 5.15 uh, with your last patient being, you know, 4.45, 5 o'clock. So there's no two or three hours staying after work, completing, finishing notes, um, playing catch up, spending time on the weekend, spending time at conferences. I mean, it, it's just, once again, so burdensome and laborious uh, that we want to try and eliminate that so that people can get back quality of life and do the things that they mm. love to do. I'm sure, I'm sure most of us have, you know, as physicians have, you know, wives, uh, significant others, kids at home, um, interests, hobbies, things that we love to do, but we're not able to do that because we're stuck sitting there hammering away on a keyboard. So uh, that was really the impetus, you know, two or three years ago when I was really hitting that point of burnout and I was just like, oh my gosh, I cannot continue to do this at this level for the next 15 or 20 years. And through a mutual connection of ours, uh, Jamie and I connected, you know, Jamie's so uh, well versed in the virtual space and I'm well versed in the medical space. We just married the two together and said, hey, you know, we might have something here that could fly. And next thing you know, you know, we've got a business and we're uh, creating and uh, having virtual assistants and virtual scribes and everything in, a, in medical practices uh, to quite a bit of success. I mean, I think everybody who's worked with us has been extremely happy with the, the services that uh, we bring to their clinics. And the critical factor is giving them back time, uh, energy, and ultimately more money in their practices. You know, one of the, the specific areas on the general medical virtual assistant, there's two things, a new patient coordinator is one of the latest things that we were, that was brought to our attention by Cindy Pezza, um, who does practice management at pinnaclepa.com. And uh, she, it, it, she found that if you're being proactive and actually reaching out and completing the initial paperwork, anybody that's ever gone to see a doctor, a podiatrist, a dentist, whatever it is, you've always had to get there early and fill out all that paperwork and make sure that they have everything. And then if you, you know, if you're there at right on time, you're late. So they'll say, ah, oh, we have to go on to the next person. And it's like, that's not fair. So a new patient coordinator can help alleviate all of that. And then there's also insurance, um, uh, benefits uh, uh, of verification. Um, so these two areas are are challenges for a lot of podiatrists. And I wonder if maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So those are you know positions within your practice where you hire a front office staff 
uh, to you know either check people in, check them out. Um, you know, and, and they're doing their their tasks, their duties, their roles, responsibilities, et cetera. However, there's this thing called insurance, right? That's really important when you're going to a medical facility. So the first thing they'll ask for is, you know, either driver's license and or insurance card. So that information needs to be updated pretty much every single visit because people change jobs, people change status, people move from one location. So there's so many little things that pop up that need to be updated within the system but making sure that you have the most up-to-date insurance information is critical because when you're filing that claim, you wanna make sure that the first pass claim rate is clean. Otherwise you get kickbacks and denials and then on the backside of your revenue cycle management, you're trying to figure out where did this go wrong and you're spending a lot of additional time or your staff spending a lot of time trying to figure out why didn't we get paid for that particular visit. So these individuals are this new patient coordinator position we're considering the having the virtual assistants do a lot of that work for us on the front end so that it's they're sitting in the system or the ehr before we ever see the patient and then we can make a good educated decision as to which direction we want to go as far as uh, services and or treatment are concerned for those patients. So yeah, I think this is going to be a really big thing. I think Cindy kind of hit the nail on the head here. Um, and I think that a lot of practices could see a tremendous amount of value from that because it's a it's a huge administrative position. Um, it also is a critical information piece that we have to have each and every time a patient is seen. So we try to update ours every single visit. So from one visit to the next. So we know that we're at the top uh, of that patient's insurance information for everything that we do for them in the clinic. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's a huge thing. It's, it's such a such a game changer. And, and being able to leverage um, these, and, and frankly, in my opinion, amazing people that are going to be sticking with you for for you know, a long time. That's our whole goal about, and that's the reason why we call them dedicated distant medical assistants. I mean, they're dedicated to you and they're going to be there for you for years to come, uh, we hope. <laughs> um, so it, it really works out good. I'm wondering, um, as we're coming up to the end of the half hour here, if there's anything else that you'd like to talk about before we before we leave or how can people reach out to you if if they want to talk to you more about either your practice or bottleneck medical virtual services. Yeah, I think there's, you know, multiple avenues. You can reach out through bottleneckmedical.com. Um, you could reach out through my uh, personal email, Dr. D R L A U R I N O at modfootankle.com. Um, those are probably the two best ways you could connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Um, if you're on LinkedIn, and so, yeah, I mean, we would we would love to help out uh, in any capacity. I think a lot of times it's just taking that first step and uh, realizing that you have a problem, being proactive and saying, yeah, I am bogged down. My staff is bogged down. Uh, there's got to be a better way to do this. And we've we figured out a lot of the pieces and, you know, we're still trying to figure out pieces as we move forward. Right. It's an ever changing environment. And. Like I said, when Cindy came up with this NPC uh, position, I, I, in my mind, I said, oh my gosh, this is brilliant because it's gonna make a world of difference as to uh, how we function operationally within our practice. So yeah, I think it's all about you know strategic delegation and this is about, it. outsourcing is technically you know delegating and delegating is not abdicating. So I, there is a big difference there. You, you do have to put in the time. There is some training associated with it. But once you get the, the people up to speed and, you know, I, I always like to refer back to your statement, Jamie, you know, do something as if it's the last time you're ever going to do it, because that is train people on the front end so that you get a bunch of freedom on the back end. Uh, I love that. And I love that saying delegating is not abdicating. Hopefully, again, I don't know if I spelled it right, but it sure sounds close. <laughs> I, I think it's spot on. Yeah. <laughs> I took a stab in the dark there. <laughs> well, um, I, uh, I'm so glad that you were able to take some time out of your busy day because I love being able to introduce you. You're you're an amazing person. Um, I I am 
proud to call you my friend and even more proud to call you my business partner. And it's just, it, I've just enjoyed the experience together. And for me to finally kind of get to introduce you publicly is, is pretty exciting for me. And I just, I just want to say thank you so much for uh, being such a great partner, a great friend. And I've learned so much from you. And it's just like, this is, this is how partnership should be in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, it, and the feelings mutual vice versa. I mean, like I said, it, we couldn't do it without each other. Cause you know, I, like I said, when I came to you initially, I didn't know anything about outsourcing and virtual assistance, you know, uh, and you didn't know anything about podiatry and, you know, how practices are run. But I think now of us, now both of us through the crossover have a real good idea how both of those sides work. So, yeah, it's been a great partnership and uh, I'm, I'm really, once again, like you said, proud to be uh, part of this and have you as my co-founder and partner within uh, Bottleneck Medical. I think it's been a great uh, success thus far and we look forward to more successful years to come. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, and all the best uh, to Modern Foot and Ankle. Um, you can go check out the site, modfootankle.com. If you're in the Phoenix area and you uh, need some work on your feet, go talk to Dr. Marino. <laughs> We're here to help, always. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, um, anything else you'd like to say before we wrap? No, uh, other than thanks for inviting me on. I'd, it's been great, and uh, hopefully some people will get some value out of this. And uh, if you're in need of... Uh, some help within your business. You know, like I said, we're primarily dedicated to podiatry right now, but we're open to speaking with other medical professionals as well. Uh, let us know. We're, we're happy to jump on a call and figure out your pain points and see if we can't drill down on those and hopefully provide some value and service to your clinic so that you can get back time, energy, money, and ultimately freedom. I love it. And without going into any specific details, I don't think I've ever seen a private practice run as efficiently as yours. Uh, it blows my mind. As you know, I love systems and processes and uh, just hats off kudos to you because that's that's amazing what you've well, done. And you've, you've helped me in the sense that, you know, I, you think that you're really systematized and then you start talking to people who are also systematically driven like yourself. And I go, wow, there's some things I need to tighten up within my business and my <laughs> practice. So, you know, it's nice because, you know, you go back and you you look at, review and refine these components that you think you got dialed in. And there's always little tweaks that can be created within our businesses to make us more efficient and productive. Well, again, thank you. And uh, it's been an honor having you on. Um, if you can hold on just a quick second, I'll go ahead and wrap up. And uh, I just want to say a special thanks to Dr. David Lorino, uh, my business partner at Bottleneck Medical uh, Virtual Services. You can learn more at bottleneckmedical.com. If you're in the Phoenix area, um, he's an amazing podiatrist. You can go check out modfootankle.com to learn about that and get his contact information. You can also send him an email directly. Um, if you're looking, uh, if you're a physician or you work in a practice and you think that this might be a good opportunity for you to explore this, especially post COVID or current COVID. I don't know how we take that as of the, as of the time we release this, if you're watching this evergreen and during a replay, um, reach out to Dr. Lorino. Um, he's one of the smartest people I've ever met and he's very, very kind. So he, he's a great person to know. Um, and seriously, in, if you're in the Phoenix, Arizona area, um, he's a great podiatrist. Uh, highly recommend going and checking him out. So without any further ado, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, if you have any questions for Dr. Lorino after this, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to make sure I forward that along to Dr. Lorino himself. And as always, thank you for letting us uh, bring on another expert, another professional that can ultimately help stop the bottleneck in your business. So we're looking for you, uh, forward to helping you uh, anytime. Feel free to reach out to us. That's bottleneckmedical.com and or modfootankle.com to reach Dr. Lorino. And uh, thanks again. Remember, make your own ripple and uh, have a great one.